A lot of Elementor users rely on pop-ups to create stunning off-canvas menus because honestly, the default WordPress drop-down menu can be a little boring. But with the recent accessibility updates that Elementor are rolling out, you will now notice that there is a focus outline around the first link item in the pop-up menu, especially for iOS users. But some could argue that this kind of ruins their nice website designs. And in my opinion, the focus outline should only be restricted to people who are using keyboards and not just any general user. And so, in this video, we are going to explore different ways we can tackle the issue. Hi, my name is David from DevDem Web Dev, a channel where I focus primarily on showing you tips and tricks on working with Elementor and eventually Bricks Builder. So let's see how we can fix this outline issue. To speed up the process, I've gone ahead and I've created a pop-up menu template and I've linked it up to the hamburger menu icon using the dynamic tag of pop-up. So now let's see how it looks on the front end. So here we are on the front end, this is our pop-up menu icon. Now watch what happens when we click on it. You see this focus outline around the first focusable element because Based on the accessibility rules, focus should be given to the first focusable element in a pop-up. And the second rule is that when we use the tab key, the tab key should be trapped within that pop-up. It should not go outside of the pop-up. So now let's see how we can get rid of the focus outline just for the mouse users and the keyboard users can still be able to see the focus outline. The first method that I see a lot of people recommending on the Elementor Facebook community is you go to the pop-up settings and then under the advanced tab, you toggle off this accessibility navigation and you save it. Now, while this method may be the easiest method to use, I highly discourage using this method because it is just bad for accessibility reasons. Now, let's watch what happens on the front end. So, here we are back on the front end. Now let's navigate to the pop-up menu. If you cl click on it, you will notice that it doesn't show that focus outline again. And if we do click inside and then click the tab key, the focus outline comes back for the keyboard users. I'm just using the tab key to navigate through them. But you will notice one big mistake with this. If we tab past the close button, it will keep tabbing out of the pop-up which is not recommended so if you see the tab key now you don't see it anymore because it is going through the buttons within the page itself and before it finally gets to the admin bar and then it can come back into the pop-up so let's see how it is when we just use the keyboard only to navigate so let's close it and then this time i will use a screen reader so i've opened mvda up now let's use the tab key again Banner landmark navigation landmark menu button. So now when we go into the button, you see it's still staying on the button itself. And then when we press the tab key, main landmark one colon one consultation link is actually on the button that is outside of the pop up rather than going directly into the pop up. For keyboard users and for screen reader users, they are already lost because they've clicked on the button, they expect to be inside the pop up, but they are still outside of the pop-up it will have to go through a lot of tabbing elementor templates by cut list how log clickable list with five items home link so now they finally get to the home page which is already terrible for accessibility reasons so i definitely do not recommend using this method at all it should never be toggled off exit nvda so now let's see a better method we can use now we are back on our pop-up let's go back and toggle back the accessibility on and we'll just save it so now that we have that on the second method we can use is literally to add in a focusable element as the first item on the list and then hide it with css what do i mean by that you can either add in a button or a heading widget for this i'll just use a heading widget so click on the plus icon and drop in a heading widget as the first 
item on the page. So it should just be the first focusable item on the page. Then we'll just give it a name. Let's say not clickable. So screen readers will know to ignore it. And then under the advanced tab, we use custom CSS. So I'll give it a class name of DD visually hidden and an attribute of tab index equal to zero. So now that we have those two things, now let's add in our custom CSS. Let's paste it. The custom CSS will be in the description below. Now you can see that the item is now hidden from us on the page, but it can still be navigatable using the tab key. So now let's save this. And then we'll test it out on the front end. So here we have on the front end again. Now let's navigate back to the pop-up menu. Now you notice that when we click on it, it doesn't show the focus outline anymore. And then when we use the tab key, we get the focus outline which is what we want. And finally, it is trapped within the pop-up, which is exactly what we want. We don't want it to go outside of the pop-up. So now let's see how it sounds using the screen reader. Let's close it. I've opened up the screen reader again. Banner landmark, navigation landmark, menu button. So it's announced that this is the menu button. Clickable, we... not clickable, heading level two. So that's the only problem that we have that it goes there and then it says clickable, not clickable. List with five items home link. About cons one content, Facebook link, Twitter link, YouTube link, close button. And then it goes back again to that. Not clickable heading level two. That's the only annoying part of it is that it keeps going back to this not clickable, which to be fair, it doesn't really change much because it's not every time that the person will have to navigate through all of this. It just probably go to navigate once and then he'll click on what he wants and then go to that page. But the only annoying thing is that if he does go past the close button, it goes back to this and then it announces clickable, not clickable. So now let's see how we can sort of solve this problem so that it's only the first time that it announces it and then after that, it doesn't announce it anymore. So for this method, we'll have to use some JavaScript to basically remove the element once it has been read on the page. So how can we do that? Let's delete this element. This time, we'll add in a button widget. And we'll place it as the last item on the page. This should be the last item before our close button. Next, we'll give it a name. So this time we'll say, it should be the menu close and we'll give it the link. The link should just be to close the pop-up. So we we'll do the dynamic tag and then we'll go to the pop-up and we'll choose the wrench icon and say we want it to be able to close the pop-up menu. Finally, we'll do the same thing again like we did in the previous step. We'll go to the advanced tab under the CSS classes. We'll give it a class name of DD visually hidden so that it can be hidden on the page. Then we'll go back to the link. So we'll go back to content and then the link where it says pop up, click on the cog icon at the right. Then we'll add in a couple of items as the key value pair for the custom attributes. So these are the items we're going to add in. We'll give it an ID. We'll give it a role of button as well as we we'll give it a tab index of minus one so that it can only be focused using JavaScript, not by the keyboard. So now that we have all of those there, the next thing is that we want to now add in the JavaScript and the CSS. So let's just save this. We'll also add in a class name to the pop-up itself. So to the pop-up settings, go under the advanced tab and then where it says CSS classes, We'll give it two class names, which are DD pop-up menu as well as the focus none. What we're trying to achieve is that at the initial stage, we don't want any focus outline on any of the links. Then using JavaScript, we want to put in back the focus and then we'll also take away the hidden item that we put in in the first place. So it's like the item never existed. So now let's see how it works. So let's add in our CSS and our JavaScript. For that, I'll, instead of adding it into the pop-up itself, I'll add it to the page. So let's publish this. 
then we'll go back to the page and then at the bottom of the page we'll add in our html widget you can use a code snippets plugin if you prefer so now let's just add this to the bottom of the page now that we have it there all we have to do now is add in our css and our javascript so here is the javascript and then on the advanced tab custom css i'll drop in the css and that's it so now let's save this and we'll preview it again on the front end so here we are back on the front end i have my screen reader open now let's navigate back to the button again L banner landmark navigation landmark menu button so that's the button so now let's open it and hear what it says clickable menu close button so now that's the close button if we actually click on the close button it will actually close the menu because we set it up to be closed elementor pop-up menu elementor templates by davden docu clickable menu close button and the next thing that happens is when we tap away from it close button it goes to the close button and then it goes to the first item home link about us link consultation one colon one co contact link facebook link twitter link youtube link close button so now it no longer exists on the page so only the first time it is said that it exists after that it is programmatically removed from the pop-up menu and then we can have the same correct flow of the page again so in summary we looked at three different approaches today the first method involved disabling the elementor's accessibility navigation toggle and that seems to be the popular method among the facebook community but we saw why it is totally wrong for you the second method was adding a focusable element as the first item of the page and we saw how that reacts with the screen readers as well as the tab key then finally we looked at a third method which involved adding a focusable element with a tab index of minus one as the last item on the page the tab index of minus one ensures that the element is only accessible using javascript not using the tab key so please write in the comment section below which method you think is the best and do you have any better method and if you want to know more about why pop-up menus are generally not recommended I'll link to a blog by Maxim in the description and also in the comment section so you can check it out for yourself. And also, if you like the design that I used today, it was designed by a lovely lady which you can check her work out. I will link to it in the description below as well. Thanks for watching and if this video has helped you out, consider liking it, subscribing to the channel, hit the bell notification icon because I release a video every week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!